Welcome back to the Tech Table. Today we're going to talk about something I've been getting a lot of questions on, and that's Premiere Pro's hardware setup and the award-winning line from AJA. So you guys know AJA. They've got great Thunderbolt products like this little T-Tap, which will monitor Thunderbolt to HDMI, or even better, Thunderbolt to SDI, which is awesome. Also, their Thunderbolt product called the IOXT, which has been doing really great. I've seen a lot of people using this product. Also, their award-winning line of Kona products, which have been a staple in the industry for years. So I asked Thad Houston over at AJA to walk us through some of the issues they're seeing in their tech support group. Really easy things like driver downloads, install order tips, common audio setup issues which sort of give this appearance that things are out of sync when really it's nothing more than a control panel setting. And speaking of their control panel, lots of great features in their control panel. So I've asked him to walk us through some of the things he wants to point out and a ton of other stuff. So let me turn it over to Thad Houston to walk you through this. We'll begin with the following assumptions. The first assumption is that Adobe Premiere Pro is installed and updated to version 6.0.2 on a Mac or 6.0.3 on Windows. The second assumption is that the AJA hardware is installed or connected to your system already. When these things are done, go to the AJA website at www.aja.com, mouse over the support area, and click Downloads. Then click on the hardware that you have connected to your system. In this case, I have IOXT. Click on the software bar, and you're going to want to download the drivers for your hardware along with the Adobe CS6 plugins, and then install them in that order. Drivers first, and plugins second. If you're running Windows, you can ignore this next step. If you're using a Mac, like I am here, you'll want to be sure that the system audio device is set to something other than the AJA card. Open your system preferences, click on sound, select output, and if you have the AJA hardware selected, choose something else. In this case, I'll choose the display audio. Computer sounds will then come through my display audio, but when audio files are played back from Premiere Pro, they'll play through the AJA hardware. This differs from the way some other NLEs are used where the AJA card is selected as the system audio device. When you first launch Premiere Pro, open the Premiere Pro preferences to be sure that the AJA transmit plugins are installed and make sure they are set up correctly. Click the Premiere Pro menu bar and select Preferences, then choose Playback. If the plugins have been successfully installed, the AJA device should show up here in both the audio device dropdown and in the video device list. Be sure to select it in both places. Now you're ready to edit. At this point, any sequences played in the timeline, the source window, or the project bin should be output from the AJA card. These preferences are global and won't need to be reset when you start a new Premiere Pro project. You won't have to specify a resolution in the AJA control panel because the match sequence mode of the transmit plugin will automatically switch the card to a resolution and frame rate to match your sequence or clip. You can read more about this mode and the alternative modes in the manual that is installed with the plugins. Before capturing, it's important to set up the AJA control panel to match the video input. Launch the AJA control panel. From the left hand menu, select Format and choose the format that matches your video input. Then click on Input Select and choose the video input and audio input that you're connected to on the AJA card. Next, launch the Premiere Pro capture window. Click on the Settings tab. And in the Capture Settings window, click on the Edit button. Here you'll be able to choose the capture plugin you'll use. I'll choose AJA MOV Capture then click Settings, where you can choose the pixel format or compression type you'll use, and the audio format. Then click OK. 
and select the AJA Serial Device Control in the Device Control section of the Settings tab. Finally, set the pre-roll time and time code offset. AJA generally recommends a pre-roll of at least 3 seconds. However, some decks need more and some need less. The time code offset is something that you should experiment with before doing any serious batch capturing. It can be different between two decks, different between two frame rates, and even between two different computers. The offsets will not necessarily be the same as they are when using other nonlinear editors, so be sure to dial in the correct offset before capturing for the first time with a new computer or deck. Now you're ready to capture. Go to the Logging tab, log a clip, and capture. The capture settings are project specific, so you'll need to select your capture plugin whenever you start a new project. However, you can select the capture plugin in the new project dialog when starting the project. Please see the AJA plugin release notes for deck specific tips and caveats. Next, we'll go over layback to tape. If you'll be controlling a device like a camera or deck via RS422, go to the Premiere Pro Preferences and select Device Control. In the Devices dropdown, select AJA Serial Control and click OK. Then select the sequence that you want to lay back to tape and go to the File menu, choose Export, Tape. The AJA Layback dialog pops up. Here you can choose which kind of edit you want to do. Insert edit is fairly self-explanatory. Print to video will export the sequence to the current location on the tape. Punch in assemble requires at least a small bit of time code to already be down on the tape and for the deck to be in regen mode. AJA recommends a pre-roll of 3 seconds for most decks. It's best to do a test edit or two if you're doing insert editing and dial in the frame offset. This may be different for different decks and different computers, and may also be a different offset than the capture offset, so be sure to test it once or twice and dial it in before doing a destructive edit. Once you're ready to do your edit, set an endpoint and click Export. The out point will be automatically calculated by adding the duration, which is taken from the work area bar of the Premiere Pro sequence.